Hey game developers and welcome back to the C Sharp Fundamentals for Unity course and as always if you haven't already check out the previous video otherwise you can go ahead and follow along with me here and what we have in front of us is of course our code from the last episode as usual uh, and so what we're going to be doing is removing that and instead talking about dictionaries or hash maps or maps or hashes or hash tables depending on what lingo you want to use but in C sharp we call them dictionaries so that is what we're gonna call them so a dictionary is basically an assortment of key value pairs and the reason why we use key value pairs is so we can look up a value by some key and you could normally do this in any kind of array say for example I could just have a struct um, that was a key value pair uh, and then just search through the struct for something with a matching key. But you all of a sudden think, well, that's kind of hacky. And the reason for that is because when you are making a dictionary and you use a lookup, it is constant time. When you search through an array, it is not constant time. It's big O of n time complexity. And if you're not familiar with time complexity, it basically is a measure of how long something will take based on iterations, right? So if we have five iterations, then um, the maximum time, um, if we have, sorry, if we have five key value pairs in this weird struct system and we wanted to find a key, uh, there's a chance that the key is the last one in the array, which means we're going to go through literally everything in the array, um, which will, will uh, be actually uh, five whole iterations. So basically, we don't want uh, <laughs> to use this um, big O of n complexity when we have the opportunity uh, for a constant time complexity. So with all that said, uh, sorry, that's kind of a mouthful. Um, why don't we go ahead and just delete this code here to make this more clear? And I'll start with actually creating a dictionary here. And I think what we'll do is just use maybe uh, strings to integers. So maybe uh, let's do a kind of product listing thing here, right? So uh, say we have bananas, we look up by the string banana, uh, and then the value will be the quantity of bananas. So our very, uh, our very empty grocery store is going to have three bananas, right? So let's say public uh, dictionary, and all of a sudden you notice, oh, there's a squiggly under it. Um, and why is that? It won't tell me, so I'm just going to continue. So dictionary um, string and integer. Uh, and then, and notice that uh, I have using systems.collection.generic up here. That is required for using the dictionary type. OK, uh, so dictionary string integer. Uh, and then let's say, let's say uh, catalog, right? And I think catalog spelled that way or that way, I'll leave it that way. Okay, so catalog equals new dictionary string integer, and boom, uh, that's uh, how you make that, and a namespace. This is a namespace, apparently. Oh, <laughs> I'm writing this out of the class, so sorry. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move the class up there, move the dictionary there. Okay, so in our class here, uh, we have dictionary catalog, uh, and it's a dictionary of string keys uh, with integer values, right? So why don't we go ahead and actually just populate our dictionary here. And I think I can do it this way with our brackets. Uh, and then for a key value pair, we can use this notation here with the, uh, the curvy braces here. OK, so let's say bananas, banana, uh, and three, because we have three bananas. Uh, we really need to restock. And let's put in some more things here, right? So let's say apple, banana, um, and I don't know, Oreos, right? Oreo. Okay, uh, so we have 100 Oreos because for some reason people are starting to eat healthy, so the fruits are going out of stock. Um, and so why don't we go ahead and just check our um, catalog to see, you know, how many uh, uh, actually apples we have in here, right? So let's go ahead and do console.write line. And here's how we access something in a dictionary, right? So catalog. Catalog. Oh, I'm going to make this static really quick because we have a static main function. Okay, so catalog of uh, Apple. Okay, uh, and so what we're going to see is five. So notice the notation here. We have dictionary, the dictionary's name, just like we would an array, 
And then we have the indexer, again, like we would with an array. Um, if you haven't checked out the array video, click it up there right now. Um, and then uh, we have a key here, uh, which is the name. And over here, this is our key. Notice that we can put in literally anything in here, even if it's not in the dictionary, but it will throw um, an exception. OK, so we should see the number 5 here. So I'll hit Start. And it'll actually close immediately because I don't have console.read key to make it wait for me to press a key. I'll hit Start again. And uh, this time, hopefully, it will actually compile. And then uh, once it's done building here, we should see just the five. OK, and we're frozen. OK, so it finished building. Uh, it took way longer than it should have, but it did. Uh, and we have a five here. So there's our five. I'm going to try that again. OK, so yeah, that's five. And uh, we can go ahead and see actually what happens if I make a typo here. So we see APA, right? So let's go ahead and hit Start. Um, and it will just crash and show us this exception here. It's not handled right. So key not found exception is what is returned uh, when we do not uh, put in a key that actually exists in the dictionary. OK, so let's stop. Uh, and uh, now what's interesting here is we can just do uh, I mean, we can overwrite it, we, the value of a key. We can literally do uh, whatever we want uh, to this dictionary, right? So like catalog um, Oreo, I mean, equals 10, right? Uh, and instead of printing this, I will first print the Oreo. And then I will do the same exact thing Oops, over there. OK, and then our Oreos will change from 100 to 10 swiftly because people got very interested in purchasing Oreos. So yeah, we see 100. Uh, and then uh, we set it. And for some reason, I printed it. And we see 10. OK, perfect. So, so now we just have the Oreos being replaced in our dictionary. So very simple stuff. Uh, it's just like if you were in an array and you were saying uh, 0 and then uh, again, zero, etc. But of course, since this is a string, it will uh, throw a compiler error here, so we cannot do that. All right. Uh, so those are the basics of using a dictionary. Um, and again, uh, just understand that the purpose of a dictionary is uh, one, so that we can organize data by keys and values, um, and then two, because we want to access values in constant time based on their keys rather than searching around uh, through an array for uh, you know, some element. OK, so with that said, that was a fairly short episode, but uh, I got the point across. Uh, if it helped you out, make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe to see not only the rest of the C Sharp Fundamentals series, but also uh, other videos that might help you out with game development. And I will see you in the next one. Have an awesome day.